Meet Kirill. Kirill is a developer, mostly backend developer, but he also has to work on frontend code every now and then. He loves writing code. Most recently, Kirill developed a new speech to text transcription service called Transcripto. He can't wait to release this application to the world. Meet another Kirill. This Kirill is a DevOps, Kubernetes, and Cloud consultant. He helps other companies to architect, build, and run complex systems. He's normally not concerned with running a tiny application like Transcripto, especially if it's a penniless startup with a team of two people. You don't need a university degree to realize that those two Kirills are the same person. Those two identities, the developer Kirill and the infrastructure Kirill, normally work well with each other. Being a developer helps a lot to do the DevOps work. By the way, don't miss our video about why anyone in the DevOps world must learn how to code. But in case of Transcripto, there is a conflict of interest. As a developer, you want to ship new code as fast as possible. The pinnacle of as fast as possible is, of course, Heroku. Since over a decade, Heroku allows you to do git push Heroku, and then your application is deployed. If you push again, your changes are also deployed. You don't need to build container images, you don't need any custom tooling or anything. It can get better than that in terms of developer experience. As a person who might get paid to re-implement Heroku for other companies, you will never admit that Heroku is great. Of course it's not great. It's super expensive. It would cost 3-4 times more than running your application on AWS. And you would still have to connect a number of third-party services to do, for example, speech-to-text transcription. And once you run on Heroku, you won't be able to quickly migrate elsewhere. Vendor login can be a problem for any cloud provider, but in this case, vendor login is a default feature. Don't get me wrong, Heroku is great especially if you are just getting started. Choosing Heroku can be a no-brainer for a team without dedicated infrastructure engineer and with big pockets. Luckily, Transcripto has a dedicated infrastructure engineer and a total lack of budget. So, what are the alternatives? For ease of packaging and portability, I want to use containers. I can run my container images practically anywhere. For the same portability reason, I prefer to use PostgreSQL as the main database engine. Using something like DynamoDB would require rewriting the whole application. Besides those two points, I would like to use as many AWS services as possible. Many of them are very cheap at our scale, and it's easy to integrate them via AWS SDKs. With these decisions in mind, let's see some other things that Transcripto needs to have. Proper AWS account setup we need one account for production and another one for pre-prod. CI-CD setup. We need to automatically build, test, and release the new application versions. That's pretty much enough to get started, unless you see the final list of AWS services involved. IAM, VPC, RDS, SNS, SCS, S3, ECS with Fargate Spot, ALB, Code Pipeline, Code Build, Transcribe, SSM, Secrets Manager, KMS, CloudWatch, Route 53. Are you still here? Okay, because I didn't even mention that I need to connect all of those services together. As a developer, I would probably give up at this point and decide not to use AWS. I could connect all of those things together with the help of a proper infrastructure as code tool. That would most likely mean using Terraform and potentially some shell scripts for the CI-CD pipeline. I can take existing community Terraform modules and link them together. Luckily, I know Terraform pretty well. There is a free Terraform video course authored by me, and even there is a book. Problem is, I don't want to do that. I have enough Terraforming outside Transcriptor, and honestly, there should be a better way to deploy a simple application which Transcriptor is. You see, even AWS is not happy about the complexity involved in setting it up for anything more complex than a single virtual machine. That's why they constantly try to make the whole experience nicer. The first attempt was called Elastic Beanstalk. It worked pretty well for many companies and it's still actively used. According to AWS, Beanstalk is the fastest and simplest way to deploy your application on AWS. But quite naturally, it would be insane to continue improving Elastic Beanstalk. Instead, it's better to add a new service on top. So AWS released AWS CodeStar. AWS CodeStar enables you to quickly develop, build, and deploy applications on AWS. See, it's a completely different value proposition than the one Beanstalk has. But once you look deeper into CodeStar, you will notice that it's a service on top of Beanstalk. It's also a service on top of Lambda and EC2. 
But what about AWS SAM that lets you organize related components, share configurations such as memory and timeouts between resources and deploy all related resources together as a single versioned entity? Is that the way to deploy Lambda functions? Should I use CodeStar or SAM or both? Well, I don't use Lambda for this project yet, so I don't have to think about it. And how about AWS Amplify? This page says that with Amplify, you can configure app backends and connect your app in minutes, deploy static web apps in a few clicks, and easily manage app content outside the AWS console. Is that what I should use? Well, probably not, because it seems like a fancy UI-based app builder, not something to deploy my Ruby on Rails application. Then maybe I should use AWS App Runner. After all, it's a fully managed service that makes it easy for developers to quickly deploy containerized web applications and APIs at scale and with no prior infrastructure experience required. Sounds great, right? Wrong, because today is November 2020 and AppRunner will be released in May 2021. I can move Transcripto to AppRunner in the future if I want to double my AWS bill. Oh, there is also Amazon LightSail, which is not AWS, but of course, in the end, it is AWS, but it pretends to be DigitalOcean, but from Amazon. And naturally, I can easily deploy a web application with a few clicks in Amazon LightSail if I am a savage who enjoys clicking things when it comes to infrastructure. Alrighty then, seems like it's not so obvious what I should use. And I didn't even explore all the thousands of extra services and hidden costs of all of those ways to simply run your application on AWS. Also, check out this article which lists 17 ways to run containers on AWS. Is it great to have a freedom of choice? Amazon throws out a lot of services and tools and practically never deprecates any of them, so it's super confusing which one you should use. You could, of course, hire MPDF to help you with that, but maybe you don't have to because I'm about to give you the most amazing tool to easily build and deploy your apps on AWS. This tool is called AWS Copilot. AWS Copilot is a CLI tool that streamlines creation of containerized applications, including configuring multiple accounts, extra cloud formation based templates, CI CD pipeline, and practically everything else that you might need to run your application. It's very easy to use by the developer, and yes, underneath it uses cloud formation a lot, but the actual resources and configuration it generates are pretty good. Let's see how we can use it to deploy Transcripto. Copilot groups your stuff into applications. Application is the largest unit in Copilot world, so I first need to create it with the Copilot init. At the same time as I create an application, I also add a service to this application. There are different types of services that Copilot understands, one being a load balanced web service and another one is a backend service. For load balanced web service, Copilot will create an application load balancer and you can assign your domain to this load balancer. Applications are deployed to environments, which can be located in different AWS accounts. The part that I really loved about Copilot is how it properly links those different accounts to your central account where CICD is running. On top of applications, environments and services, Copilot provides pipelines, which means it nicely wraps around code build and code pipeline, plus it sets up GitHub integration for you. You only need to give it a repository and an access token, and it will do the rest. The pipeline Copilot builds can be easily modified to suit your needs. In case of Transcripto, I've added a test phase, as well as a manual approval gate for production deployments. Copilot relies on a pretty simple and compact manifest, one per service. You can configure many different things with different configs for each environment if you have to. I mean, just look at this file. In less than 40 human readable lines, I define everything I care about at this point, and in return, I get a proper CloudFormation stack that take care of VPC, IAM, ALB, ECS, and so on. You can also connect any other AWS service that Copilot doesn't integrate with natively as an add-on. Add-on is just a CloudFormation template that you drop into the Copilot add-ons directory. Copilot will connect it as a substack and also expose any outputs as environment variables to your container. That's how I configured things like S3 buckets, SNS topics, and Amazon Transcribe IAM permissions. Notice the IAM part. I don't have to specify that I want to attach this policy to the role that Fargate tasks run with. Copilot will take care of it for me. In short, Copilot, at least at this exact moment, is my new favorite way to deploy new applications on 
AWS. For Transcriptos use case, it proved to be perfect. It never stood in my way, I could implement everything I needed, I was happy with the security part of it and the automatic cross-account deployment without the need to prepare spaghetti of IAM policies is just a, just a huge relief. Most importantly, Copilot is not an AWS service. Instead, it's a simple CLI tool that makes it easier to use AWS services. Yes, you still need to know the services it will configure, which costs they have, and you will have to integrate some other services on top, but it's surprising how far you can get with just using Copilot alone. Copilot is also great from a developer perspective because thanks to the aforementioned pipeline automation, I can just push the code and it's built and deployed automatically. Or I could also use Copilot deploy command if I have to. Both dev and ops parts of me were super happy. So now that Leo has prepared everything for the product launch, let's press this release button and let Transcriptor conquer the world.